What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first league championship here in the Super Mega Baseball 2 series in the Kane League. We have our two cans, of course, meeting up with the Phantoms. We both won our semifinal series, two games to none, and we didn't do it with a lot of runs. They did it with 14 over two games. Now we have a best of three to crown the first champion here in the Kane League. Let's begin. Someone's gonna be crowned champion, who will it be? I'm not surprised the Phantoms are our opponent for this. I kind of expected them to represent that side in the championship game here as the game opens with a base hit to left for Kailoa Kanoa. We know he has plenty of power. Now Jackson Taylor, who is tense. I'm not sure exactly, but it seems like in the playoffs, Mojo might be a little more... Uh, what's the right word here? I think that it will be changed a lot more often, and it's a bit more sensitive. Maybe that's a good way to put it. That ball gets into center base hit. But from just one game, we already have a few players who are tense and have their ratings going down. And at the same time, there are a couple players whose ratings are going up. Here's a bunt from Tyrone Brightful. I wasn't expecting that from the power hitter. Brightful now with two aboard, puts this on the ground. Thank you, Brightful, as we will get two. Runner moves up to third, however. Oliver Ardonez trying to bring him home. We'll see if Maxwell Fowler can close down the first inning. We'll be careful here. And two straight strikes out of the zone. How about the curveball laying off? We'll try that high heat. That ball blasted out to deep left field, over the head of Ja'Cory Day, and into the bullpen, a two-run homer, and the Phantoms strike first. Wasn't expecting him to go oppo, 414 feet. Ordonez now with five RBIs in the playoffs. That's really good. Thankfully, this inning is eventually ending here. Desmond Payne gloves it, but now we got some work to do already. I know we haven't allowed very many first inning runs in this series, so this is definitely a change as we face Jack Curley. Mostly velocity. As John Charles skies one into the outfield, that has some good carry. And another ballpark that might be out of here. Center field is not hitter friendly in this yard. Let's go, Jordan. We want the alleys here, not center field. We know Jordan can hit it out anywhere, however. 3-0, oh, by the way. And we'll walk on four pitches. There's a base runner. Marcus Calhoun, though, is tense. I guess that uh, the playoffs haven't been kind to him so far. Ah, oh, man, got jammed. On the ground, they'll get one. Stark Snail on second for Michael Riley, who's been a very key player for us this entire season. Some very timely hits. Oh, way too late on that. I've noticed that lately, the pitches I'm the most late on are like the easiest to hit, the ones right down the middle. I'm not sure why. So we're on to the second inning now. Robbie Reed opens up here with a ground out. Can Maxwell Fowler put a zero on the board now? Dion Gold pops it foul. No problem for Riley. Vince Jennings. That ball tapped foul. We'll attack inside with the changeup. This going to second. Oh, you saw that. He reached for it. I know I've had some issues with fielding in here, but he reached for it. I think with a higher fielding rating, Cummings makes that play. Jack Curley, the pitcher, though. It would be cool if in this game you had the option to go with a DH. I don't believe that's an option. But at the same time, like yesterday, I was playing the Twins franchise. We played some interleague ball against the Brewers. And I got to say, like, even without a DH, the uh, National League way is fun. There's a lot more strategy involved. It's like two completely different games because of the dynamic of your pitcher hitting and if you want to pinch hit for him or risk an at bat. It's such a different dynamic and it's kind of fun. 
Desmond Payne gets the start in center because David McClelland was having, uh, I think he was tense. Then you have Perry Cummings, who's hitting 500 here in the postseason. Taking one upstairs here from Curly. I don't like the inside corner. One and one. Way too low. What am I doing with that? Two and one through the middle. Perry Cummings. And that felt like I was swinging really early, and that wasn't super early. I guess my internal timing here on what I, when I need to swing at pitches down the middle is off. So I've got to adjust. And there we go. 3-0 here to the speedy Ja'Cory Day. And they have put two of the fastest players in the league aboard. Oh, but it's Maxwell Fowler. Oh, man. With two outs. That feels terrible. Maybe I do want the DH in effect. I don't want to have Max up right now. But maybe Max can help us out here. A walk is always helpful here from your pitcher. But we have two strikes now. That ball tapped to first base. We're not going to score. Having the pitcher come up is a real rally killer. Kaloa Kanoa locked in at the plate. And that goes back to Fowler for a quick grounder. Jackson Taylor next. We had two hits to start the day. Hoping to get him swinging here at something bad. Maybe I should slow down a little bit here. Curveball low and in to Taylor. Into center field. Desmond Payne in a few steps. Two away here in the third. Now it's Tyrone Brightful who has one of the only playoff home runs here in the league. He also led the league. No, he didn't lead in home runs. I think he led in RBIs. I can always verify later. When it comes to those league leaders, those are the players I think I'm going to give rating bumps to. I don't think they're going to be very aggressive ones. But Brightful strikes out. There we go. There will be some change going into year two. I want there to always be some element of change with player progression, maybe player regression, but that is tougher because I can't see the stats for every team in the league, only ours. So I could do regression for us, but how would I handle other players that played about the same level? I finally got it down the line and it's still not gonna matter. Jordan Starks. Now, as commissioner of this league, I'm also thinking about the drafting process I want to do. For the first draft, I think it's going to be a one-round draft. However, I'm not sure how to handle it given I'm the, the controller of everything here. So I thought about a lottery system for not only the... There we go, to first base. But I thought about a lottery system for the draft order, but also like kind of a lottery for the players that are available and maybe just ranking them on a big board with their overall ratings or uh, an average of a few composite ratings. I'm not sure how I want to handle it yet because I think it'd be fun to do kind of a lottery system for the teams that didn't make it to the postseason. Like put them into a randomizer and then go ahead and figure out what player they get as a result. But we're on to the fourth inning and the Phantoms lead this one off now with a gapper that splits the outfield. Let me know if you have any suggestions for how I should handle the draft. Because right now in my head, it's like a draft lottery. We're gonna take the players that didn't make the, or the teams that didn't make the postseason. We're gonna give uh, the worst team the best odds and randomize that to complete the order. And then for players, I could just like, you know, have eight players created and the best player overall from some sort of rating goes to the team with the number one pick. That might be the most fair deal. Oh no, I screwed that up. Just to give whoever picks first the best overall player, but then you have to factor in like needs because not every team is the same. I made sure of that. Oh, that's still foul. There's a big strike too here from Max. We gotta keep this game close. No funny business. Jennings strikes out. 
Thankfully, they are waving at a lot of bad pitches today. And now we get the pitcher up. Jack Curley on the ground to Perry Cummings. Still two zip. I even thought about not letting the championship team get a pick. How's that for some parody? They don't get an upgrade. Or a new player. And it's also like, how good do I make all the players? Whoa! I thought about maybe making four above average players for the non-playoff teams and four maybe lesser players for the playoff teams to simulate, um, you know, the value difference. And it has to be more aggressive because we only have eight players that are going to be in this first draft. I'll figure out some kind of system. It'll be fun, I hope. And I'll probably figure out if I can find, like, a randomizer online that gives me all the control I want. There we go, Dez. All the way in right center. He'll be on second base. But uh, whenever I set the order, I want to do it in a way that's kind of a part of the episode. Perry Cummings. And this ball going to left center might have a chance, but it's caught by Brightfall. So we only have two hits so far. We're struggling here against Jack Curley. Back to the top with Kanoa, who absolutely clobbers that ball foul. And then he pops one here in play. Shouldn't be an issue here for Ja'Cory Day. But we are top five now. Whoops. That's okay, at least I missed out of the zone. Jackson Taylor, sharply to Perry Cummings. 43 pitches thus far for Maxwell Fowler. They're actually making him work a little bit. That's a fair amount of pitches for the CPU, facing the CPU in this game. And we're through the fifth inning rather cleanly. And Ja'Cory Day will try to jump start the offense. Curly's ratings are going down. He has used 62 pitches. We have been more patient than the Phantoms. Three and one. Right down central. We're going to left with it. Base hit, Ja'Cory Day. Maybe I'm just getting better with the contact swings because I feel like... That might be, uh, for some reason, I'm hitting better with the contact swing than my power swing at the moment. What's better here when a player has no contact or power? Probably just to not swing and hope that, uh, we walk. I want a bunt here, but there are three balls, and we walk. Okay. It was a little late to attempt bunting anyway. Let's go with KJC. Oh, that was a good pitch to hit. Oh, we popped it up. Infield fly in effect. The first out here in the fifth. Jordan Starks is locked in. This is who we want up right now. But we pop it into left. Chased inside. Now two away. Phantoms trying to get out of this little jam. Marcus Calhoun having a tough postseason. Of course, I was hesitating there on a good pitch. Not that one, though. It's stopped by Reed. Out number three, and the Phantoms keep us scoreless. What a game so far. The Phantoms giving us all we can handle. And that's, I think, their third or fourth leadoff hit. They've done really well to start these innings. Kai Saunders. Good contact and speed here. Saunders looks at strike two. Will he chase the heat? Not that far out. Popped into the seats, probably. Fork ball gets gulfed into left field. Saunders now 0 for 3 on the day. Robbie Reed is 1 for 2 and having a good postseason. Probably a lot of singles for him. Quickly two strikes here for Max. We'll hit him with the fork ball. Could be a chance at two here. A, a hop that kind of helped us. But it wasn't enough. Dion Gold. 
That ball hit into right. KJC back to his right a few steps, and we got through five and a half now. Wait, a new pitcher, Patrick Armstrong, into the game. He's more well-rounded and has this awkward delivery that's going to take some getting used to. Oh, man, I'm not ready for this right now. Oh, no. Turned on that one. Come on, Mike. Oh, he popped it up in the shallow left. I've got to get some hits here. we got to get back to the top of our order again. Dante Rooks. Oh, it's all oh, caught! It's so much easier for me to, like, track the ball when I have a right-handed hitter there for some reason. It shouldn't make a difference. Oh, no, an early swing. Armstrong has me all out of sorts here. Oh, man. Jennings is up now, and that's skied for day. Might be the last inning of work here for Maxwell Fowler. Let's go, Patrick Armstrong, right down the middle. Can you even hit it? The fork on the ground. Calhoun to Riley. Now we got to be more careful. Kaloa Kanoa pops up into shallow right field. But the pressure is certainly on as our offense hasn't really struggled this much all season. This is one of the best pitching performances we have faced. Perry Cummings has a hit today. And he has another one going to left field. Perry Cummings stepping up here when it matters most. And the contact swing is doing better for me right now. I might need to stick with it. I think that all but one of our hits maybe have been contact. Maybe all of them have. Jacori has one, I know that. I'm getting some good line drive contact swings too. Here goes Perry Cummings to second, and he almost got thrown out. That got lucky. This ball stopped by Reed behind first, and that's an out. And now we probably need to pinch hit Fowler out of the game. I want to go with someone who has some contact, but there isn't a great contact back bat on our bench. So do I just go Frank Fitzgerald, or do I try going Martindale, who has better contact? I'm going with Kmart here. Martindale off the bench. Can he be one of our heroes? On the ground, sharply to second, we'll take it. It scores a run, two to one. Back to the top now. Kelly John Charles, only one hit, I believe, in the postseason. I think in game two, Perry Cummings has likely re-earned the leadoff spot. Goodness, what is that? Popped it up. My power swing right now is off, and especially against this delivery, I just don't think I can do power swings anymore in this game. We're going to Gallagher here, hopefully to keep it 2-1. to one. Jackson Taylor, though, with other plans. Deep to the alley. That ball's off the wall, and we're lucky it was. A leadoff double. And the Phantoms are giving us a fun game today. I'm really enjoying this challenge. Brightful now. Don't get spun out, Tyrone. If he gets spun out by anything in this series, I will laugh. Hysterically, that's into center. Trouble. Runners at the corners and nobody out here in the eighth. In a game where our offense has struggled mightily. Ordonez has already gone yard. He has three hits. And now make it four. Three to one, Phantoms. I'm trying to give them some stuff that's out of the zone and tougher to deal with, and they're still hitting it quite well. Saunders. And now he lays off. Into left field on the line for Day. Now hopefully a grounder from Reed. Robbie Reed. Way out in front. Ooh, nice call there, Ump. Thank you. But not that one, huh? Strikeout. Not a very good at-bat there for Reed. Beyond goal. Sweet. 
Trying to be careful here with my remaining pitches. This ball drifting foul. Almost cut by Day. I was a little off with the accuracy. A second chance and Gold strikes out looking. So we have our 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 guaranteed to hit. Jordan Starks, we're going contact swing. That's out of the ordinary with him. And Stark skies it into Central. That's not helping us. Five outs remaining. Oh, no contact here for Calhoun. I'll try a power swing. Ah, oh, not that one. One and two. Another tough take. Whoa! I... Somehow missed that one. The reticle was in the right spot. I guess my timing wasn't there. I have not hit well with Riley today. I hope Armstrong exits after this inning, though. Oh, I'm, I'm just behind it. We're on to the ninth now, and we're going to pinch... Uh, not pinch, pitch. That could be a thing. I just want Marquise Walker to give us an inning here. Don't want it to get any worse. Nice stop. Oh, wait. We got to get Perry Cummings out there. So score that one. One, uh, three, four, one. That was a strange uh, put out. Up the middle. Through. The Phantoms haven't had too many one, two, three innings. They've been really good. Oh, wait a minute. Was that Armstrong who just reached base? I wasn't even paying attention. That was the pitcher's spot. Didn't see if they pinch hit. As Kanoa grounds into the double play. And there will be a new pitcher, Julio Mariano. Oh, man. He's got some of the best movement in the entire league. And he has a chance to secure game one right now. Mariano down the middle. Back up the middle here, we got Rooks grounding to Saunders, one away. The pressure's on, Desmond Payne. Mariano. Payne hits it on the ground, now at gold. Two away for the two cans. Perry Cummings is two for three. It's up to Perry to extend this game. Cummings skies it into foul territory. And this ball is down. It's not over quite yet. Come on, Perry. Cummings up the middle. Grounded by Saunders. And that's game. Phantoms get the victory. With one of our quietest offensive performances of the entire season. We met our match today. We only had four total hits. We had to manufacture a run with some small ball. And that's the best we could do. Ordonez, player of the game, four hits, three RBIs. And Jack Curley gets the win. So we are facing elimination when the series continues next episode. I still found that episode to be incredibly fun to play. And next time, as we face elimination, we need to get a victory. It'll be Cole Hartman versus Taj Body. And the Phantoms will try to end our season and claim the first title in Kane League history. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the episode despite the loss and the uh, poor play from our offense. We'll try to step it up next time. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.